would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call uh, by Mrs. Kate Mayer. Thank you. Anita Jagosinski. Here. Kate Mayer. I'm here. Tim Meniger. Here. Lisa Collins. Um, Lisa indicated she may be a little late. All right. Gary Dunlap. Here. Joe Gittens. He's excused. And Cheryl Hancock. Here. So with five of the seven school board mm -hmm. members present, I would declare a quorum. Uh, board norms reflection, as you know, in your board folder, and a few weeks ago or a few meetings ago, we adopted some board norms as far as meeting um, activities and um, respect and all of those kind of things. We reaffirmed many of the things we were doing and discussed some new ideas for our meeting. So um, just to remind you of those board norms and take a look at those as we, our meeting proceeds. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, I would also ask that we delete item 9.2. Um, ben is um, unable to be here this evening, so we are going to approve an agenda deleting item 9.2. Are there any other changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'd so approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that you come forward and follow a five minute time limit per person. Please state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Just come on forward. And just for the, um, the group here, in case more than one person wants to speak, yes, right up to the mic, have a seat, okay. please. Um, when people come and they provide public participation, many times the items aren't on the agenda, so we aren't able to discuss mm -hmm. those, but sure. certainly would respond to you. Dr. Carlson will respond to you on behalf of the board and let you know, especially if that item may come up at a future board meeting. So okay. please state your name, address. Rebecca Blank, N7440 Casper Cooley Road. The reason that I'm here is it was brought to my attention that there's some talk about next year at Evergreen combining both the, the second grade class, now second grade class, into two classrooms instead of three. As a parent, I have concerns about that. But I thought, well, that's my perspective. I'll ask my second grader and my fifth grader, who are currently at Evergreen, and my fifth grader has made the transition from fourth grade to fifth grade. My second grader, when I asked him, for those of you who know him, he said, that's a terrible idea. He said, obviously, they must not know my classmates. He said, and I said, well, why is that? I said, why would you say that? What are the problems that you see? He goes, well, he goes, I think the only thing that's going to happen is he said, the kids who listen and the kids who are minding their manners will be, it's a punishment. He said, because the kids who need more attention, who are loud, who are mean, he said, will be louder. And they will get all of the teacher's attention. And when I need help, I won't get it. He goes, not only that, he said, who's looking out for the kids with disabilities? He said, I have friends in a wheelchair. He said, they have a very hard time getting around the classroom now. He goes, if you put more kids in the same class, he said, Mom, they won't be able to move. And I thought that was pretty insightful for a second grader. So I think his concerns are very valid. From his perspective, he works hard, and he views it as a punishment. And he sees several people who will be affected, many of whom are his friends. He told me about his friend who uses a walker, who's already been tripped because of being pushed. It wasn't anything that was malicious. It was simply because kids are kids. And when a child has a disability, they need a little bit more space. So he's worried about that. My fifth grader came at it from a fifth grader's perspective. And I said, well, what do you think? She said, he's right. She goes, I do well because I can focus. But 
I've seen her, and as a fifth grader, this has been the hardest year that I've seen her go through. I've had more tears. I've had more homework because she couldn't get it done at school because it was too loud. She said, Mom, all the kids that are naughty and have bad manners take so much time that she said, I can't work and I can focus. So she's spending two hours a night in some of her homework because it's not getting done. And this is a girl who's very responsible. So I don't know how the kids are doing when they're not focusing, when they can't. And she said, well, I'll make it through. She said, but she goes, I would have actually been better prepared for middle school if I had to switch classrooms more often. Because I know in middle school you, don't have, to, you have to do that. She goes, I'm not as prepared as I could be. So those are the concerns. As a parent, I'm very concerned. Because my second grader is already st struggling, not in an academic sense, but he's struggling because he's not being challenged to his full potential. And I said, so I get a notice from the teacher that says, have you noticed him not hearing? I said, well, yes, I've had his hearing checked. It's perfect. I said, why? She goes, well, because when I ask him something, sometimes he doesn't seem to be paying attention or maybe he's not hearing me. And I asked him, he goes, mom, I am so bored. He goes, I've done my work. My work has been done for a long time. He goes, I really like her. She's a good teacher. He goes, but mom, she can't challenge me because there's no time. And I think that's unfortunate. While I've been very pleased with Evergreen, I think it's a wonderful school. I think we have room to improve. And I think if we're going to take really good care of our children, that maybe we should listen to them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tina Velisca. I live at 302 Heather Place here in Holman. Um, I too have the same concerns uh, that Rebecca had. Um, my fifth grader uh, made that transition this year, and I didn't advocate a whole lot for their move to two sections. Um, I was kind of looking at my two children. They're very different. Um, the fifth grader is handling it fine. Uh, my worry for my second grader uh, going into third grade with two sections. Um, the new math curriculum this year, although I think it's great, that it's challenging the children, it's been difficult for her. And I worry that next year with less teacher time um, and less help, I worry that that's not going to improve and it's gonna cause a lot of frustration um, for her, who's a pretty good student, um, but also for the children who really struggle that need that time. And then they're going to get that teacher time. Where does that leave those kids that are middle of the road or upper end? That really concerns me. Um, I'm in education myself. We talk about RTI. Let's be proactive. Let's not have to do those interventions if, if not necessary. We can have these lower class sizes with wonderful teachers that are there to support the kids. Um, the academic needs, and not only that, but the behaviors, they're only escalating. I feel like as a teacher, behaviors are escalating year to year. Uh, that proactive stance is going to be beneficial in the long run for these kids. They really need teacher time. And as a teacher myself, it's hard to give kids that time that they need. It's the best gift we can give them is our time. And I just feel like we're really not being proactive if we drop those sections of two. Um, the other key factor here too, this is their first big year of the WKCE testing. So we have to prepare them for that. They need our time to help them be ready for those tests. Um, I just don't want to see not only my child, but a lot of the other kids in that class lose time from adults and see those other kids getting more time, those behavioral challenges, taking the time away from all those other kids. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? <laughs> <laughs> Please know we welcome your input and your thoughts. So, I am Tarina Gilbertson. I live at W5841M Johnson Road in Holman. I echo a lot of the same things, but I will come at it from yet another perspective. Um, I volunteer and I, I substitute in Evergreen. 
and I can attest to the number of behavior problems that there are with that particular group of kids. Um, I don't know how it all works with identification and at risk and all of that. I don't know all of the ins and outs of that. I do know that there isn't enough people to deal with some of the behavior problems that there are with that particular group of kids. And I feel like if you put a large number of students in with teacher with two teachers, those behaviors are just going to escalate. Um, my daughter in kindergarten loved school at first, had a group of pretty tough kids in with her and got to the point where she no longer wanted to go to school and would be in tears the night before. I don't want to go to school, Mom. She's a very good student. She's very bright. Her teachers say you know, she's very respectful. She's never been a problem. But for her to have said that as a kindergartner, I know that's coming again in third grade. I've had two kids go through third grade. It was a tough year socially for them. And I think just in talking with other parents, teachers, whoever, third grade is just a tough transition year all around. More homework, more testing. We're expecting more and more from these kids. And there's less and less time for them to get the attention that they need from the teachers within the school. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I see we have someone else. Good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Kelly Grabowinski, and I'm from 1601 Coronado Street. Um, I, too, have a child that goes to Evergreen, and, and this is was brought to my attention actually tonight, <laughs> um, that it's being looked at to possibly take it down to two um, teachers for the amount of kids that are enrolled at that school. Um, I have a child in fourth grade and in second grade. My child in fourth grade is tremendous in school. He achieves everything, you know, is great. My child in second grade needs Title I support. Um, he really struggles in school. Um, and this year he has made some improvement, but I'm very concerned when we take the headcount that, that's currently there today needing this support and, and now take Title I out of it because it's my understanding that Title I will be gone for these kids of this age at the third grade level. Um, that support would be gone and that, that concerns me a great deal. He has made tremendous, tremendous um, improvements over the year with this help. So he, he very well may not need it anymore but I'm afraid taking that, that head count down is going to take time away that, that he and, and not only him, other students need from the teachers and it's gonna put them right back where, where, we, where we were at the beginning of second grade. And that's a lot of wasted time of his teacher's time that I, I mean that I truly feel that's a lot of wasted time of their time that they've done all year long. Um, I'm also a parent volunteer for the PBIS um, team at Evergreen and you know knowing that this is a, a big thing for the district to achieve the goals I'm very concerned taking that uh, ratio down again is going to increase some some events under the PBIS um, umbrella and you know being able to achieve these tiers is very important and I want that and I, I, I mean I want I want to be that and I want to be like hey guess what Evergreen did it you know we did it but I think this will enhance some of, or in, increase some of our out, outbreaks of attitude and behavior and such. So those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Come forward. My name is Christy Schrader. I live at 311 Mallard Drive. Um, I really can't disagree with anything anyone else has to say. I agree with all of it. Um, I'm looking at it as, right now I think our classroom has 21 children in the classroom. I have spent time in their volunteering and <laughs> kudos to her teacher for keeping up the way she does with 21 kids. My thought is if you had seven more kids to that classroom, without any more help. I'm afraid where those kids will go in third grade. I'm shaky, I'm very nervous, sorry. <laughs> um, third grade is very, very pivotal 
for kids, third grade is so different than kindergarten first or second. Third grade, everything changes. They start their new testing. And, you know, there's kids on the bubble. Um, there's kids that are advanced. There's kids that are below the bubble. All three levels of those children are going to be affected by adding even five more kids. But if you had any more kids to a classroom, they're going to lose the teacher-student time. And I think that, that would be a shame. I really do. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board this evening? Okay, well thank you very much for coming forward. Again, um, I know that this isn't on our agenda for this evening, but we do appreciate your sharing this information with us and um, your thoughts, and Dr. Carlson will respond to you, and um, I'm sure we will be discussing it at a future um, opportunity. So thank you very much. Then moving on to recognition and thank you, Dr. Carlson. We're going to begin tonight. It's just a uh, wonderful evening, several recognitions, and I know high school principal Mr. Bob Bear is part of a couple of them, so as he walks up, we'll let Bob get things started in introductions. Okay. Good evening. My first introduction and part that it, the part that I will be the first one is um, a young lady by the name of Kim Schleby is going to make a monetary donation to the high school. So at this point in time, I would like Kim to come up. Kim and I have known each other for a few years now. We initially got to know each other when Karen Rooney was our director for our plays and musicals, and Karen has not directed <coughs> one now for how many years, Kim? Four years? Okay. <laughs> that's been a few years. So that's how I got to know Kim. Presently, Kim has a son that's a sophomore and also one that's a senior. And she has a um, high interest in the area of career and tech ed, and especially um, the tech ed and ag ed area. So in a couple conversations with her, she has informed me that she would like to make a monetary donation to the career and tech ed in the ag ed area, and that monetary donation is in the form of $5,000. Wow. So thank you very much, Kim, and we appreciate that. <laughs> At this point in time, I would like our tech ed and ag ed teachers to come on up, and in order, they are Mr. Regan, Mr. Bakeberg, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Lella, and Mr. King. And Kim ha must have a ton of power because she's got a <laughs> suit and tie on Mr. Schmidt. Bakeberg has a plaque you would like to present to Kim. I guess I get to be the spokesperson. Um, no, I just echo uh, what's been already said, but we, we generally uh, or genuinely uh, appreciate this. Um, like many areas, we don't often get to have the funding available to get that cutting edge in uh, cutting edge stuff. Uh, this time around, we decided to get a, a laser engraver, laser cutter. Um, it's going to put top end technology into the hands of students, so we greatly appreciate it. On behalf of the school district, we just want to uh, say how much we appreciate what you're doing. It's very generous and very kind of you to think of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll let Mr. Bear move into the next uh, presentation of recognition.
My next presentation is for Michael Schmitz, and at this point in time, I would like Naomi and family member, if she wishes, to come up with her. What I will initially do is I will read the inscription that is on the plaque, and after I've read the um, description on the plaque, I will have the um, Booster Club members that are here come up and help present this plaque to Naomi. Mike Schmitz was known for his generous nature and gregarious personality. He befriended anyone he met, and when he spoke, his voice could be heard resonating with warm enthusiasm towards all who were within hearing. Mike's voice was also the talent behind his career in radio and cable TV, sales management, and marketing. He worked for WLCX, WLXR, Onalaska Cable Companies, and was the sales manager for the Lacrosse Radio Group. During his career, Mike was also a co-owner of Lacrosse's ESPN Radio. Mike enjoyed volunteering his time to many regional and community organizations, serving as a board member for the YMCA, Big Brothers Big Sisters organizations, and was a founding member of Christ the King Lutheran Church of Homan. Mike was actively actively involved in Oktoberfest, starting out as a grenadier, served on the Oktoberfest board of directors, and MC for opening day opening day ceremonies for more than 30 years and was the MC for the Fest Masters Ball. Mike's professional talent and engaging broadcasting personality led him to announce for the, the Lacrosse Interstate and Dells Motor Speedway, where his <coughs> dynamic, entertaining race narrative made him an audience favorite. Mike was a tireless contributor of his time, talent, and energy to the Homan community and school district. He served as a board member for the Homan Area Foundation, Homan Civic and Commerce Association, Homan Show Choir Boosters, and Homan Athletic Booster Club, where he is also an officer and scholarship chairperson. Mike's engaging voice was well known at school sporting events, where he announced cross country and track invitational meets, football and basketball games, and WIAA tournament games. Additionally, he served as the Master of Ceremonies for the Show Choir Invitational for 13 years. While he did so much for others, Mike's family and faith were the most important things in his life. Mike and his wife, Naomi, raised three children, Amy, Tara, and Derek in Homan, and enjoyed serving together as event staff as they watched their children compete in sports, perform in school programs, and graduate in 1995, 1997, and 2001. Throughout his years, Mike was an inspiration to others through his integrity, team player attitude and generosity of spirit in supporting many different people, programs, and causes. The Homan Athletic Booster Club is honored to pay tribute to the outstanding lifetime contributions and memory of Michael W. Schultz. Schmitz. You know, Schmitz. I'm sorry, <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi and family, congratulations. I will try to respond. Is it on? Can you actually hear me? I can really yep. talk quite loud. So, <laughs> <coughs> I would like to thank the Booster Club um, for this award in honor of Mike, and to thank you, the board members, for my opportunity to say thank you to you. Um, I'd like to also thank those that came to share this night with me and this award. My daughter Tara and her son Easton. Colton is home with his daddy because he's a little bit uh, too young to be up at this time of the night. Mike's mom, Beatrice Schmitz. 
my friends, Lindsay and Dwayne Groning, my pastor from my church family is in the background there, Pastor Tim Dusenberg. And I had invited Pat and Joni Smith to also come. Um, Pat is not um, doing real well. He's, he's got some health issues, and Joni just didn't feel that they could, could make it. But I do know that they are here in their thoughts and in their spirit. Mike believed in giving back to the community and surrounding area where he lived and worked. Growing up, his father served on the town board, and his, in his early years in radio, he was blessed to be mentored by two of the greats in lacrosse, Joe Rohr and Gene Getz Bassett. He learned early on from them how important it is to give back to your community. Mike struggled with health issues most of his life, but he never let them be an excuse to give up or to stop contributing. I can remember him saying to me, there are no problems, Naomi, only opportunities. He also held on to a scripture verse that was his, what he liked to call life verse. It comes from Philippians 12 through 14, where Paul is talking about being a work in progress. And Paul states, not that I have already obtained all of this, or have already been made perfect. But I press on to hold uh, hold of what but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mike did not look to the past other than to try to remedy and learn from his mistakes. He always lived for the day. It was new every morning with new opportunities to grab hold of to make life better for himself, his family, and his community. Thank you for this honor in honor of Mike. I'm so excited that Beatty was able to um, come this evening. I grew up in Melvina, where Mike grew up as well. And Beatty was a family friend, and the Schmitzes were family friends of my family. So when I moved to Holman 24 years ago, it was so comforting to me to know that he was there. They were friends of my older sister, and um, just having that friendly face in town. And his need, when he had some health issues, there was a fundraiser that they were doing. And someone named Lloyd Dresden called me and said <laughs> he'd been received that my name that maybe I would be willing to come and help out. And because of that, I met a community of people that are just what Holman is all about. The people in that neighborhood came together and helped support Mike in any way that they could. And we saw these good people that we see here reaching out and helping Mike. And that was the beginning 24 years ago of my involvement in the community. And Mike is, has been a mentor to so many people. I really am grateful for what he gave me, that ability to get to know people and to learn from him. Because you're right, every day is a new day. And that's what I learned from him. And it is so fitting that we recognize him, that the Booster Club is recognizing him today here at the school district. Because there, oftentimes, you'd go to school and you'd see Naomi, of course, but Mike was there also. So we just really, it's, we miss him. But we know <coughs> that he has left a legacy that will be forever. So thank you so very much. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, I think I'm going to call upon Ruth Schulze and others that are from the Holman Area Historical Society, 
and uh, just a, an exciting presentation about a project that's been a long time coming. And and uh, Ruth, I'll let you yes, yes. Ruth, I'll let you call the principals as you want, and as far as receiving those as well. Okay. That's the trick. <laughs> Actually, I have a lot of I be out there, too? There. On behalf of the Lomonaria Historical Society, my name is Ruth Olsey. I'm the current president. And with me tonight, we have Kathy Stone, who has been a, a member of our Historical Society and a retired teacher within the school district. And my daughter, Hannah, who is the current um, archivist for the Holman Area Historical <coughs> Society. And talking about community, did you know that at one point, we had 11 one-room schools in the school district of Holman. And before 1960, we had those 11 one-room schools, including the school that was the state's graded school, where the middle school is kind of located right now. And so there's a lot of school bells out there. And we appreciate finding those school bells and giving them some recognition. So tonight we have three bells that we want to recognize and present plaques to the school board and then to those principals and share just a piece of history with the community. So Brian, come on. The Holman Public State graded school bell. This bell rang over 100 students who attended the Holman Public State graded school. The school, originally located where this bell tower now stands, was built in 1905. A second story was added in 1912. High school classes were also held in this school until 1921, when a separate high school building opened. The Holman Public State graded school closed in the 1960s. The school building was raised in 1973. And this bell tower was later erected to commemorate its location. So we'd like to present this to the bell tower that's been standing the longest in the community of Holman without a might be day, so that now you have something to put on them in the shed. Thank you so, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ruth? Do I was going to say, maybe we could get a picture of each school, but then at the end, a, one, a cumulative one? So, yeah, Mr. Vogler, maybe step aside, but just don't, uh, just hang around there. <laughs>
The bell rang over the third building located north of Holman on County Highway D. So Joanne, on behalf of the Holman Area Historic. I just wanted to say we need to give a special thanks to Kathy Stone who took it upon herself to have our bell tower constructed. And she did that. So we're, we're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone. And obviously, it's certainly understandable if you have other things. But we have a couple more recognitions or things that we want to bring attention to. First of all, um, tonight is officially would be the last board meeting where two members um, would serve uh, the last meeting. And unfortunately, neither one were, they knew this, they were unable to be here this evening. So Mr. Joe Gittens, who is completing his third year on the board, and we, so we thank uh, Joe and, um, for his service. And on behalf of the board, through the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, there's a certificate of appreciation as well as this uh, that will be presented to, to Joe Gittens. In addition, our, our student uh, board representative, Colin Trivet, is on another uh, student activity tonight. And so um, he really apologizes for not being able to be here, but we may try to have him come back for a recognition at an upcoming board meeting. But again, on behalf of the board, there's a certificate of appreciation, a gift of appreciation for Colin for everything, for his time, things that he has added to this board this year. So we wish both of them well and thank each for their service. And then finally, just a recognition of some, appreci or some appreciation weeks that are upon, are upon us. Actually, we are just finishing, although the recognitions continue even this week, uh, recognizing our volunteers in our school district who do so much. And so I know that throughout the district we've had and will continue even this week having recognitions, uh, breakfasts, and so on. Um, recognizing our many volunteers uh, that um, really help make this school district what it is. And so uh, with great thanks to all of our volunteers. Also coming up, we are uh, going to be celebrating the contributions that our administrative professionals uh, make to this school district and support the good work of so many. And without them, obviously, we would not uh, be able to be uh, what we are and the outstanding work that we do. So um, officially nationwide, I believe, it's the official day is Wednesday next week, April 23rd. And again, um, we will have different ways throughout our buildings and district of celebrating those individuals. And uh, we, we will have a couple other recognitions coming up at the next board meeting as we enter the month of May as well. So with that, just thank you to everybody involved for the contributions that you make uh, to the school district of Holman.
Okay, thank you, Dr. Carlson. And as always, thank you to those groups and individuals that were here this evening to be recognized. Those who could not be here also want to um, recognize you and thank you for your service. It is just uh, an example of what makes Holman what Holman is, and we do thank you. It's also been a pleasure, I think, on behalf of the board to say thank you to Joe and to Cullen. It's been a pleasure to get to know them, and it's funny because they have I don't know if Joe ever missed a meeting, and Cullen, I think, maybe missed one uh, one meeting that I can remember. So it's we will make sure, though, that we give them their recognition um, appropriately in the next coming weeks. So then moving on to reports and discussion. 2014-15 uh, CISA for contracted services. Dr. Carlson? I'll just introduce, this is an annual um, issue, paper that you look at, consider for approval. It's a contracted services through CISA 4. Again, this in what, if you look at your issue paper that you should have in your board packet, what we do is we try to give you a comparison of this current year, which would be represented by the strikeouts. And again, a number of people um, at the director level and beyond um, are involved with identifying these services on an annual basis. So I know those people are here um, if you have questions. But again, you'll see that there's not a great deal of difference as far as the services that we are planning or looking at contracting with CESA for this coming school year. You would be asked to consider approval of this at the next board meeting. And so, but we are here, if you have specific questions tonight on any of these items, be happy to answer those. Are there any questions? Okay. Then we will move on to the next item, which is the monthly expense, oh, I'm sorry, that was deleted, sorry. Care Rehab Services contract. And I will call upon Julie Krakow to present that issue paper. <clears throat> uh, in your packet tonight, you have an issue paper for occupational therapy services. Each year, we come before you to ask um, to foot the bill for this service. Um, last year, you asked me to explore some other options, and so I did that, and you'll see that um, in the issue itself. So we are obligated to provide occupational therapy services to our students with disabilities who are eligible for the service. And uh, this year we looked at three different options. Our current option um, that we have been using is SaluCare. Um, and then this year we looked at what it would cost us as a district if we were to hire our own occupational therapists. And then we also looked at CESA 4 as an option. So you can see the costs there as they're broken out. Um, and it's my recommendation tonight that we continue to contract with Salucare Rehabilitative Services um, at the cost that, that you see listed here. So I'm here to um, answer any questions you might have about that. Are there any questions? And this will be on the next agenda right. at the next meeting. So if you do have right. any questions, please feel free to forward them on to Dr. Carlson. Thank you, Julie. Really. Okay, then the next item is 4K lease agreements. Again, this is an annual uh, agreement that comes to the board. This is pertaining to one of our community partnerships that we have with our 4K program. And this is for the Lacrosse uh, Daycare Center, Child First. And both Wendy Savasky and Sue Eitlin are here tonight to respond to any questions you may have. But I think that we could sum it up that very similar um, all the way around to the agreement this year. And even uh, the cost is very, uh, very similar to what we have for the current year. We have two sections one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and that um, would plan to continue with that. So um, this would be coming to the board again at the next board meeting for your consideration. And again, if you have questions, both Wendy and Sue are here, be able to respond to those. Okay, any questions? All right, then moving on to health insurance options update. Mr. Clark is moving to the microphones. 
And I, I would just like to uh, thank Mr. Clark. Uh, Mr. Miller was, again, um, hoping to be here, and but unexpectedly today uh, he was unable to be here. So Jay is stepping in, but Jay has been instrumental in uh, um, assisting and working with Ben and others through this. And really tonight, uh, Jay is going to present really what has happened since March 24th, kind of the process, as we said we would do. And, um, and then finish up with uh, what you'll find here that really no changes to the options that were presented to the board back on March 24th. So with that, though, Jay will just uh, share an overview of what has happened since then. So as the board members know, but perhaps some of the listening audience does not, I'm going to cover those events. So March 26th, we had a 6.30 meeting. Uh, an information and input session for staff and retirees, which they'd been notified of ahead of time. We did the same thing on April 1st at 1230, trying to accommodate people who work second shift. And then on April 1st at four o'clock, we had over 90 people attend these input and information session. Um, I should say spouses uh, as well as employees uh, attended the meetings. And you know it differs from household to household who's in charge of health insurance, so we were welcoming them. Um, to give you an idea of how uh, those meetings went, we um, asked attendees to fill out a report card on the agenda and grade us from A through F. And uh, on a four-point scale, we got a 3.75 grade point average. So we felt like the attendees felt the meetings were uh, meaningful and valuable. Um, following those meetings and uh, at those meetings, uh, we asked people to submit their questions in writing or to verbalize them as they were comfortable. And uh, you'll see um, the results of that on the school district's website. And I'm there now, um, and you can see here we not only have the questions and answers uh, posted to the website on the health insurance. And you can see there were 39 different questions that were asked and we developed responses for. Uh, different colors just indicate that those were later submitted uh, questions that we wanted to respond to. Uh, but in addition to um, that question and answer, the PowerPoint was made available to people who could uh, not attend uh, on that day. And um, so it's there in its full content. And better catch up with me here. Um, the health insurance renewal options were presented and made it available for those that could not attend. And uh, as the board was informed uh, the last time we met, we really want to make sure that um, our employees are aware of what's going on and have an opportunity for input. And these are all examples of how we uh, work to accomplish that. Um, we did offer additional uh, sessions for those who could not make it on the dates offered, and we did not receive any requests for additional uh, meetings, either private or in large groups. Uh, based upon the input we received uh, at those meetings and uh, apart from those meetings, uh, there are no changes, as Dr. Carlson referred to the options that we would um, be pursuing at this time. Remember, uh, these are not finalized decisions, but these are options we're going to gather more pricing information on and further evaluate. Um, so that's the recommendation that you have before you tonight. It's actually the same issue paper um, you saw previously. So I'd answer any questions that you might have. Are there any questions? I would just note that the Personnel and Governance Committee reviewed these options as well and um, recommended that they you know, move forward with the, the options as presented, noting that um, the current um, what are we saying um, with making no changes at all status quo is also one of the options um, but that these other options may find us some help with that anticipated premium increase so but yes the personnel and governance um, did review them and recommends their approval it is on the agenda later this evening so thank you mr. Clark then consent agenda items 
We have six, I think it's six items on the consent agenda this evening. Personnel report, financial claims and accounts, employee handbook language, um, health insurance options, and the first reading of three policies. Unless someone would like to pull one out individually, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. I would ask that 10.4 be pulled out separately. Okay, 10.4. <laughs> oh, and also, we, well, we can do that. You can still do that. So 10.4, are there any other items we'd like to pull out? So then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items um, as presented with the exception of 10.4. Is there a motion? I'll so move. Is there a second? I'll second. And discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then 10.4, um, I would entertain a motion to approve. I would make a motion to approve item 10.4 with the exclusion of item five, which re results to the uh, um, changes for the family planning. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Okay, then I would entertain a motion to approve item 10.4, which are the insurance options, correct? That is correct. As originally presented. As originally presented. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And then any discussion? I, I'm just going to make a comment that I, I am going to vote no on that. A couple of reasons, and I, I can't remember who said it, and I certainly don't want to take credit, but I, I feel that that's another um, effect of some of the changes that have occurred in Madison as we've seen a lot of teachers retiring. We've got a lot of younger teachers in the district that we probably are experiencing a higher rate of, of pregnancies. And as a school district, I'm not so sure that that's a bad thing. And so I'm certainly not wanting to go on support of, of looking to try and limit some of that. So I'm going to vote no basically on that point alone. Any other discussion? I know that the, I would just say personnel and governance committee discussed that item too and it was um, the, it was I think the idea that to look at the numbers, we suspected that the numbers of younger, the age of our teaching staff, that kind of thing probably was lowered as a result of what Tim just just mentioned. But I don't think the intent is to eliminate, but maybe help um, and assist our staff and give them other options um, to do so. Um, I would just share that from that Personnel and Governance Committee. But um, there is a motion. Any other comments? Motion on the floor to approve 10.4 as presented. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries. And Tim, you would like that noted, correct? Please. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Carlson. Oh, yes, Dr. Carlson. Sorry, you should have gotten <laughs> me during discussion. Well, that's okay. <laughs> we might go out of order just a little bit, but if the board's okay with um, recognizing Ms. Joanne Stevens, who the board just um, I'm, I'm going to assume, regrettably, uh, accepted her notice of retirement. And so, Joanne, um, I've had the honor and privilege of working and knowing her for the past six years. And um, she, in the last five years, has been the leader at Evergreen Elementary. And um, it's just been, uh, I've, I just personally thank you and appreciate so much your leadership, and prior to that, I believe about 10 years, uh, was the associate principal at the middle school. And so um, this is always hard. Uh, we've said this before, when we have people like this that are making, which I know, in fact, has been a very difficult decision. And so, um, Joanne, thank you. So, and thanks the board for let, allowing me to make that comment. Well, I just, I was going to be, it was going to be part of my um, 
comments, board comments, but I know that this last Friday was my granddaughter's birthday, and I understand there's video of Joanne jump roping with Lucy, <laughs> um, but she just went out of her way to make that such a special day for my granddaughter, and that I know is what she does on every day in the in the school it makes it a special day for all those students who come in the door so I just wanted to personally thank you for that and promise that I'll get that video too I was gonna try to have it played tonight but I didn't get it but um, but yeah it was uh, just so touching Lucy came home that was one of the first things she said so thank you so very much then moving on to board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in order of <coughs> roll call, ask you to present any comments or committee reports that you have. Um, Anita Jagosinski. Um, I just have well, a couple comments for the retirees. Um, it's hard to approve retirements for, there are a few people on that list tonight that you that I call um, for don't that like school. to see under the retiree section and um, when you try to write notes to people that are retiring and try to eloquently tell them how much they've meant over the years or try to express you know without blathering on blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> and you start over and over so your note is coming Joanne I just start over and over and a um, couple other people too Jane Maddox um, boy, I just, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't even have the words to express, um, but we are a very lucky district to have the people that we have in it, and I hope to God we appreciate the people that we have every single darn day because they will not be here forever, um, and thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you do because you are a tough cookie, and I admire it, and you you have a heart of gold and you um you always have the best interests of those kids at heart and i do know that and when i was working the town of holland at elections on april 1st i did want to get up and hug you but i had to take care of the voters so i'm very <laughs> sorry joanne <laughs> but um i thank you for everything and um anyhow that's all i have for now okay thank you kate mayor um what Anita said in double um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was visiting your school in the last couple of weeks Jan we had given me a heads up about these magical rolling creatures called spheros um, which if you haven't checked it out look at it on Google I think I even posted on my my Facebook a fake orange that rolled around but without going on and on about that I also learned of the support um, Joanne that you gave your school financially and philosophically for what Janet brought to you and I know Robin was so grateful for that but I saw second graders through fourth grade I believe that day doing profound things just profound um, not just gaming but creating games they're programming they're learning to use these robots and make them do all kinds of things they're using them um, for a fundraiser for Aaron um, so thanks to to both both of you for what you did the presentation for the in the first place and grabbing it and saying hey yes evergreen wants to do this also a great thanks to the high school counseling departments um, and the administration but the counselors just work so hard I also attended two events one was the reality store I got to play the nurse again this year and that's always fun because you get to tap kids on the shoulders <laughs> and say hi pick a card any card she I hope you bought insurance and then they pull out cards with some calamity or disease <laughs> or <laughs> terrible thing and they have to write a check to me to the nurse and that I have big football players running for me by the end of the day they just there she is she's the nurse <laughs> go 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 um, and then the respect retreat which also happened just recently on almost all day event it was a shortened school day but just kind of a tear-jerking day high school kids by the end of the day grabbing a microphone in a dark gymnasium with a tiny candle giving testimonials about their life and about how they can support their friends um, how they can respect themselves and others a very moving day and I cannot imagine how much work it is to put on those events um, real appreciation Joe if you're listening it was a privilege 
to sit next to such a gentleman this past year. Um, you have been a calming, intelligent, respectful model for me. And I thank you for all the service that you've given, not just on the school board, but in the community of Holman. Um, you're a wonderful man, and I felt privileged to work with you. So thank you, Joe Gittins. Hey, thank you. Uh, Tim Menegar. Just a couple of quick things, and, and certainly want to echo the comments around the retirees this evening. Um, they, are, they are always very um, bittersweet moments because you're certainly very, very happy for those that are retiring and wish them great well, but always sad to see them leave. Um, they've touched so many lives, um, and their, their impacts will, will really live on that they have done. So I want to thank all of them. And, know join us here this evening and and uh, certainly has has had, had uh, touches on my family as well so thank you for that um, the facilities committee met earlier this evening and uh, is always uh, a very active uh, continuing to have discussions around um, um, middle school and high school capacities and starting to do some data gathering for some of that as well. So much more to come on that just in very early stages, but uh, really looking at and continuing and we'll always look at space needs as we continue to grow. And I think that's always on the facility committee's agenda, but uh, continuing to, uh, to look at that as well. Um, and with that, uh, spring sports are underway. So uh, get, out, uh, get out and enjoy lots of, lots of great things happening. So, uh, so go Holman. Hey, Lisa Collins. I don't have anything to add. Gary Dunlap. I was a little surprised to hear Joan was uh, jumping rope without breaking something. <laughs> she has a reputation for her falling down. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. I'd like to thank, thank Joan for, for choosing us and staying with us, us as long as she did. And, and uh, I hope you really enjoy your retirement. I'd like to thank Joe. Uh, for his wisdom and Cullen Trivet for his youthful enthusiasm while they were on the board. I'd like to congratulate Cheryl and Tom and their victories in the last election. I'd like to thank the Holman community for their support in the election on my behalf. It's always a humbling experience to be elected to the school board. And I hope everyone has a nice, pleasant, quiet Easter. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, let's see. Um, I mentioned the video but I've got to tell you with the discussion and the input that we heard from parents tonight I can just relate to that Friday we had 10 little kindergarten girls over for a birthday party <laughs> God I didn't realize you. girls screamed for everything you did but I cannot imagine we had five adults so we had one adult for every two little ones and I just can ima can't imagine and I know that the um, the school district is committed to providing support to our students and um, we have some policies that show that and I think that um, as they continue to make those hard discussions decisions we'll have discussions about that so I wanted to thank the parents though for coming forward tonight we we really welcome that because input is what's going to make us better and um, we like to hear about what's going on and we want to make a difference and we can't we don't always have the decisions that will make people happy but we try to do what we can to address the concerns that they have and make sure that they're they are taken care of students are our number one um, uh, priority here and so i i just want to assure the parents that we will continue to to work with that um, the p and g the personnel governance committee did meet we talked about the insurance options but we also did quite a bit of work on some policies and employee handbook language um, which you've seen and you'll see more of the compensation model committee also met and we talked a lot about again input and how are we going to get input from the community as to what is the appropriate way to reward and compensate the professionals who are in the classroom each and every day and so we are trying to develop some strategies to do that because it's important it's part of our policies and philosophies that those kind of major decisions will be um, done with input from all of the stakeholders so um, look forward to that it may be surveys it may be focus groups it may be just opportunities for people to provide some input um, this evening we celebrated people we celebrated history and we celebrated staff in Holman um, it, 
I always enjoy those meetings when we have a lot on our agenda under recognition and thank you. So this, it, the first half an hour, that was a great meeting when we can do that. And thank you for making sure that we know what those positive things are. Of course, Cullen and Joe, we'd like to thank them for their service and welcome Tom to the board. Um, we, I also just want to say thank you to the community for your support. Um, I am going to go on record in saying this was my last run for the office, so three <coughs> years, three and I'm out, but I, um, it, it is, as Gary said, always um, thrilling to get that support from your community and be reelected, so thank you very much. Then, moving on, um, school board elections, Kate? Yes, I have the results that have been verified for the districts that came in, and I'll read them from number one, two, and three. Our new school board member, or our returning school board member, number one place, Cheryl Hancock, with a total of 1,345 votes. Also returning, Gary Dunlap in second, with a total of 1,321 votes. And third, Tom Cruz, welcome aboard, with a total of 1,063 votes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And then you received the correspondence. I think it's still going around. I would just note that um, the Board of Canvassers, um, Advanced Placement Council recognition, and um, Joanne Stevens' retirement announcement was in there, but I also know you may have seen that already. Uh, board meeting schedule coming up. We've got April 22nd, CESA for um, mm -hmm. new board member orientation on the 22nd. The 28th, we have a board meeting. May 12th, we have a board meeting. May 24th is high school graduation ceremony, um, one o'clock at the La Crosse Center. And if you would start looking at your calendar, that Wednesday before is usually the recognition event. And I would just encourage you to get that on your calendar too. It's a wonderful, again, celebration of those seniors graduating from the district. Uh, May 27th is the board meeting, and remember we play with that because of um, Memorial. Memorial Weekend. Thank you very much. Um, I know April 23rd we will be having our work day with Matt Fail, um, so April 23rd. Then June 4th is our CESA 4 annual convention, and we will be appointing our representatives to that at our annual meeting, which is next, our organizational meeting, which is next uh, board meeting. And with that, part of our norms is to do some reflecting on our meeting. Um, anything we, oh, 11.4, board meeting reflection. Oh. <laughs> Look at the written copy. <clears throat> okay. This is what's okay. posted. This is what's posted. What was posted, I'm sorry, 11.4 is board policies, administrative rules for review, student attendance, abuse or neglect of child or vulnerable adult, and employee child at work. Um, which committees are looking at. And so what we're looking for is input from board members. Those, I think those policies were in our um, packet. Right. And you had an opportunity to take a look at those. Um, I know that we've received, especially on 539.4, um, number C, we are have received some feedback on that. Um, Dr. Carlson, would you sure. like to speak to that? Sure. Again, the first two, I believe, again, I saw a committee is ready to work and review on those, but this is the opportunity for our board to philosophically look at that. So if there are questions, I know that and Julie and Wendy are here, as well as uh, Kate, who chairs that committee. If I could, though, on behalf of the Personal Governance Committee, just talk about item 11.4C, the employee child at work, the board did, this had come before the board back on September 23rd and for your review and that philosophic review. But since then, a lot of, a lot of work has gone into this policy, the employee, uh, the child at work um, administrative rule. And there's two primary issues that have been discussed by not only personal and governance administratively, but we also got input from the employee relations team as well. And really the two primary issues that uh, I think, and, and again, others that have been involved can speak to this, 
like the board to have some further uh, consideration or reflection on, on the current administrative rule talks about just all children um, not being at the workplace for supervision purposes. So some of the conversation has centered around would there be um, an age at some point, an age uh, threshold or difference where a, an employee may have a child at work but not for supervision needs. So that's been some, one of the issues that I know a number of people have been challenged with working on this administrative rule. The other piece to this is when we talk about employees, um, it's not just the classroom teacher that perhaps most many of us go right to when we think of that child at work and having them in the classroom, but we have a lot of other different activities, co-curricular activities, where we have people that, um, again, commit and dedicate a lot of time and energy that their child may be present. And so those are two examples, some challenges that with that the different people that have been involved with this that we keep coming back to. Um, is there an age where it might be different to have a child at a workplace where it's not uh, uh, perhaps a distraction for that employee as far as demands on supervision? And then second, it really is what about so many of the co-curriculars and all the other activities that um, perhaps an employee's child might be present. So those of you that, uh, I mean, personal and governance and others, I don't know if I've captured some of the main issues. I know, Jay, you've been part of that as well. Um, but those are some of the things that, since this was brought to the board back on September 23rd, this keeps coming back, and we're just not, haven't made great progress of getting past some of these issues. <coughs> I think the issue is that we want to have a policy on the books that we're following. And right now, we aren't necessarily following the policy as it's written. And so children are coming to school, as Dr. Um, Carlson indicated, on a regular basis in different situations. And while it may appear, oh, that's okay, in some, I think as he said, well, what about a maintenance worker? Or what about a, a cook or, you know, if it's not an emergency situation? Or a, a co-curricular where basketballs are flying or people are on the balance beam or a child could be a possible um, safety concern. I mean, so we really, before we brought it to you with those kind of things included, we wanted to get your feedback um, because I know when we when it went to the e Employee Relations Committee, there was a lot of feedback that, well, wait a minute, there are people who are saying they couldn't do this unless they were able to do this with their child. And so I just don't want to bring this policy to you with that and have it be a surprise and then all of a sudden have to backtrack. So please, what you know, if you would share with us what are you thinking or what your thoughts are for this so that we can help to use that to then draft a, a policy. My first thought, kind of consistent with the, uh, the insurance, is I like kids and it's, it's all good, but then the, the, the conservative thoughts in me say, what are the liability issues with this? And, and has, has the committee talked about that? If, you know, there is a child at, say, a sporting practice and they get hurt or somebody gets hurt because of a child or, you know, in that workplace. I mean, and I'm not sure, not being an expert in that, but those would be some of the questions I would have is what, what liability issues come as a result of that because sometimes whether we like it or not, that does sometimes trump other things when it puts the district um, at risk. Other thoughts? Is there, is there a possibility of of kids at a certain age, like a 10-year-old coming with a basketball coach to watch him coach, you think is formula, formulated, signed some type of release for their students? Or the, I don't know that would be possible. a yes to the, even to yes. the question that mm -hmm. Tim asked. Is that that is something that we've that has been part of the discussion? So, 
I was just thinking that too, Gary, that there might be some kind of compromise in that. And then also thinking about the, the very, the big differences between a physical environment, like a co-curricular coach, where our students are running all about, as opposed to, and, and I'm looking at a document that's talking about in an emergency, it's not happening all the time, <clears throat> with um, perhaps a teacher whose child is in the classroom next door and their care, daycare worker is sick and that child is just gonna sit there <laughs> and be school appropriate. That's two different scenes for me that yeah. seem like a very friendly way to help out an employee, even a cook that's off duty for that matter, you know, is different than a cook that's on duty <laughs> when the child around hot stuff. So the physical environment, I know it's got to be tricky as you come up with a policy, but in my mind, it is two different things, and maybe there's a way to allow both of them with, with signing some kind of release. And I think the the emergency part is part of our current policy, right. so that's okay. It's right. really looking at more routine. Yeah. And it, so so right now maybe there is there are some instances that have become more routine, and so we we need to look at that. Or that's the feedback that you receive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have reason to believe that. Okay. Right, and that's been some of the challenges of really following the administrative rule. Thank you. Well, if you have additional input or thoughts now that you know, now that you're aware of exactly what we're thinking about or talking about, we will be looking at that in the Personnel and Governance Committee and probably bringing back a draft um, for you to possibly consider because I know we asked for this to come before you because we didn't want, we've seen a draft and you know, we'll probably bring that back to you then next time and, and provide for, or we could actually do it in a weekly um, report and just have them see what is out there then what's out there for consideration and if you have some concerns then we could discuss it at the next meeting or then because we just don't want that committee to work on this and then you know come here and meet a wall so okay great thank you for that discussion that's why we do that so <coughs> so then um, moving on to reflection I if anyone has anything to discuss about the norms I think how we, if you want to share how you felt we did this evening, did we follow the norms? And I think so. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So I would then ask Mrs. Mayor to make a motion regarding executive session. I so move. Would you read the resolution? Absolutely. <laughs> Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin 19.851E for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating a daycare center 4YK site lease agreement and 19.851C for the purpose of deliberating upcoming collective bargaining over total base wages for affected professional and non-professional staff members and for the purpose of reviewing the district administrator's performance evaluation. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Seeing none, then Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call. Anita Jagosinski? Yes. Kate Mary, yes. Tim Menninger? Yes. Lisa Collins? Yes. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Joe Gittins? Absent. Cheryl Hancock? Yes. And we will reconvene in about five minutes. Okay.